mm -hmm. regardless of the sport? What is it that does it take to compete in the Olympics? And then once you get to the Olympics, what exactly does it take to win a medal? Well, it turns out our next guest should know because she won silver medal for Team USA in 2018. Lauren Gibbs began bobsledding in 2014 after the Sochi Olympics, and she made the national team in her first year of competition. Lauren Gibbs joins us live this morning on PIX11. Good morning to you, and thank you so much for being here with us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I know early in the break we were talking about once an Olympian, always an Olympian, which I love. Um, and I just want to know a little bit about your own backstory. What made you choose bobsledding of all of all the Olympic events? I always say bobsledding chose me. I didn't choose it. <laughs> I, my friend Jill Potter was training for Rio, and she knew my soon-to-be pilot, Alana Myers-Taylor, and she was like, I think you should bobsled. And I was like, what? <laughs> um, but I have, a, I have a promise to myself to fully vet every opportunity that comes to me. So I was living in Denver at the time and went down to Colorado Springs the training center to try it out. And uh, the rest is history, I guess. The rest, as they say, is history. I was curious to yeah. know how one trained for bobsledding. And I looked at your Instagram and I saw that you train actually on a track, like a running track. Yep. And how long? Yeah, so, Go ahead. So we train like Olympic sprinters and Olympic weightlifters. We have to be really fast, but we have to also be really strong and really explosive because the sleds are 365 pounds plus. Holy yeah. moly, a mere 365 pounds, nothing. I yeah. love looking at these pictures of you. So here on the program, we love to talk about mental toughness um, or what it takes to just survive getting up in the morning. And I'm curious to know, as someone who spends years preparing for the Olympics for an event that's, what, 30 seconds? What, is, what kind of mentality do, do, do you need as an Olympic athlete? And how can we apply that mentality to our everyday lives, if it's at all possible? I think, well, my saying is everybody can have their own Olympic moment. I think what, what it really means is every day I have to be in the moment for training, right? Every day I would tell myself, what if this was run for at the Olympics? Mm. And that always gives me that extra oomph of like, let's really make the most out of this last sprint, out of this last lift, out of this last push session, so that when that time comes, that is so fleeting, as you mentioned, I'm ready for it. and. You know, on those two days in 2018, I felt like a superhero <laughs> and I felt perfect. And as an athlete, that's such a gift. And I think everybody can do little things every day to prepare themselves for whatever their big moments are in life. Right, right. I love that. I'm, I'm preparing for my first ever half marathon and my AirPods went dead the other day during a really long run. And I was like, what if this happens on race day? And I was like, I'm just going to have to keep running. That's it. Mary now J. Blige or no Mary J. Blige? <laughs> Ooh, Mary. Right. Did you Love watch you, the halftime show? You, Mary. Did you watch the halftime show? Yes, I did. It was Living her best life. Living her best really? life. Really? <laughs> yes, yeah, she was. As she should. As, as well she should. So, Lauren, talk to me about what happens in the aftermath, because I have often heard this about athletes and performers in general. You prepare for that big moment, and then the big moment passes, and then there is this lull. Do you, have you ever experienced the blues? And, and if so, how do you overcome them or work through them? I did, and I didn't expect to because I went out and had a storybook finish, mm -hmm. you know, three and a half years to the games and a medal. Um, I, I didn't expect to feel that way. And I just remember waking up at like two o'clock in the morning, just crying for no reason. And I think the biggest thing was, you know, asking for help and ex being ready to accept it. And I think, you know, when you come back home, no one wants to hear about any tough times that you've had. They just want to hear like, the games are amazing. Everything's perfect. And that was the case, but it's that like, what do I do next feeling? Or mm -hmm. I can't believe I'm about to try and do that again because it's just so much work. Yeah. It took all of me for three and a half years to get to that three and a half minute moment, you know, of four runs. And so it's just very overwhelming. And then, you know, you become a different person. You just, in most people's eyes, you just are an Olympian. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm so much more than that. I, it's an honor to be an Olympian, but that pressure of like, I'm an Olympian now, is, can be tough too. And so um, I would just say, if you know an Olympian, just be super supportive because they're going to go through different feelings and emotions. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's so much fun and then it's over. Right. And you just want that back and you can't. You have to wait four more years. Right, right. So you've used all of that 
experience that you've learned to make the switch from Olympic podium to tech development. Tell us a little bit about what you're working on. Yeah, I am the VP of partnerships for this incredible uh, brand called Heroic.us. It's all about focusing on the journey, doing little changes every day to become the best, most heroic version of yourself. And that's really how I got to the Olympic podium. I did little things every day to be the best athlete I could be come 2018. Um, it's all about doing 10 habits or actions mm -hmm. and, you know, becoming more energetic, more connected, mm -hmm. more productive. And I don't know who could, you know, who couldn't use that right now, right? It's been a tough few years with the pandemic. And this is all about your journey and becoming the next phase of your life and becoming the best version of yourself. Lauren Gibbs, it has been such a pleasure and privilege to talk to you this morning. You're officially the only Olympian I know, so good job. Oh, what You're doing honor. great. You're doing great. Thank you. I'm taking your advice and applying it back to you. So thank you so much. Continued thank success. Thank you.